Hi guys, Mark here. Welcome to another one of my videos. Today we're going to be tying a simple yet nice looking pedacord key fob. This one is based on the gaucho fan knot, meaning it is quite easy to tie. The biggest challenge in this project is the tightening up process. Still, this project is more on the easy side. Let's take a look at the supplies, then get into the tying process. As a side note, I designed this key fob because it has a nice looking zigzag pattern when you do it in glow-in-the-dark paracord. I'm going to be tying my gaucho fan knot onto a dowel rod. This one has a diameter of about 3 eighths of an inch, so a centimeter. A rubber band is also handy for holding your cords while you're tying the knot. We're going to use two colors of Paracord 550. One cord is five and a half feet long, the other one four and a half feet. A lacing needle is super handy for this project. Some hardware such as a rope thimble or a key ring can be used. Finally, scissors and a lighter are used for our cutting and melting tasks. So let's get into the tying process. To tie our key fob, we take our dowel rod we attach a rubber band. Take the longer out of your two cords. So this one is five and a half feet long. Place one end under the rubber band. Pull a bit over half a foot under the rubber band. So here I probably have about 8 inches. Onto the other end attach a lacing needle. So this is the working hand. First wrap around 4 times. Like this. Then back from right to left, we pass over our previous wraps. So four X shapes. Then pass between the axes, coming here to the right. Here, we now do a simple under one over one sequence. So here we go under, Then over, under, over, and so on. On the right, we place our working hand alongside the standing hand, going under one. Take the working hand, place it under the rubber band. 
We have already tied half of our key fob. We now weave in our second shorter cord. This one is four and a half feet long. Place one end under the rubber band onto the left of your first standing hand. Attach a lacing needle onto the other end Travel alongside your first standing hand, doubling it up. So, under, over, under, over, under, over, and so on. On the right, we exit under one. Essentially traveling under our first standing hand. Then we re-enter over one. Then under one, splitting a pair of parallel strands. So over under over two under one over two under one over two. So a simple under one over two sequence. Each under splits a pair of parallel strands. On the left, we exit over two. We re-entered under one, then over two to split a pair, so a pair of parallel strands, over two, under one, over two, under one, again over two, under one. Keep doing this until you reach the right side. On the right, we exit under one. Finally, in our last step, we start over one, under two. Then over two, under two. Over two, under two. 
over to, under to, and so on. Each over to or under to splits a pair of parallel strands. On the left, we exit over to and we place our working hand alongside the standing hand going under to. We have tied our knot, now we need to form it into a key fob. Remove it off of your mandrel, so off of your dowel rod. Take your first working hand, so this one here, where it's coming out, we go back in, through the knot to the right, like this, then back to the left, forming our loop. Take the second working hand, where it's coming out, we go back in all the way to the right. Like this. Here, I'm going to attach my rope thimble, then begin tightening up. To make my job a bit easier, usually, at the start of my tightening, I place my lacing needle as the cord, just to make my tightening a bit more even and consistent. Then I begin. So first, at the standing end of my first cord. I go through the knot, removing slack, and making sure that all of my strands of the same color are lined up. So here, these cords here, here, these cords here, and so on. always lining up my strands. And then I pull my slack into my loop like this and then into my working hand. I start with my second cord exactly the same way. At the standing end, going through the knot, lining up my strands.
I pull my slack into my working hand. Like thus. Then I repeat my tightening process for a second time. Starting at the standing end, going through the knot, lining up my strands. Then the second chord, then we're going to continue. After Tightening two times onto my lacing needle, I push the lacing needle out and continue tightening probably two more times. I can use the lacing needle to get some leverage onto my cords when I'm tightening up the knot. So again going through both of my cords, lining up my strands, tightening up the knot. The end result should be a really stiff hard knot. After tightening up the gaucho fan knot, I'm going to place this end, so the standing end of my second cord out of the way. Either cut it off or secure it using a rubber band. Take your other two ends, so the two long ends of your first cord. With the left end, make a loop. Fold your right end up towards the top, like this. Pass it under your loop. Pass over this top left strand, under the left end, then over, under, over. So over, under, over. This ties a cardic band with a diamond shape at the center. Take the top right end, pass it over this top left cord, and through the center of the cardiac band. The bottom left end passes over this top right cord here, through the center of the cardiac band. So this is our lanyard knot. Now before I tighten it up, I'm going to also place this short end through the center of the lanyard knot. Then pull on the two working ends just to tighten up the lanyard knot a bit. Now Work these two cords into your lanyard knot, through the knot, and into one of your working hands. So let's start with this one here. out into one of your ends. Then 
this other recorded pass the slack through the knot into one of your ends repeat again to tighten up your knot further and to reduce this gap between your knot and the gaucho fan knot Once you're happy with the look of your knot, trim your two long ends up to the length of your short one. You could also trim here to get a flush end to your knot. Usually I trim a bit of the inner strands, then melt the two ends. Trim the working end of your second cord as well. So guys, that's our project for today. I hope that I presented everything clearly enough and that you were able to replicate and make a beautiful keyfob of your own. If you like content like this, consider supporting the site on Patreon. With that said, thank you and see ya next time.